In 1992, the Central Texas Conference of the United Methodist Church created the Office for Hispanic Ministry. Indeed, it was the foresight of many in the conference who saw that this was the new frontier of ministry in this area. And since that time, we have been forging ahead in many different ways. We know today that the Hispanic population is the largest minority in the United States. And by 2050, the Hispanics are projected to be the majority in our country. So it is imperative that we engage our new neighbors in ministry. Both clergy and laity are getting involved in this ministry in the bounds of our conference and there are some exciting ministries taking place in various locations. Hi, my name is Victoria Archibald. I am a member at Alliance United Methodist Church in mission at Diamond Hill United Methodist Church. I think it's so important for uh, Latinos to start reaching out to other Latinos. I think we need to begin to support each other. We need to begin to uh, unite together so that we can become a people that uh, is worshipful and spiritual for God. I think it's important that the older generation of Latinos begin to set the model for the younger ones so that we can begin to uh, work together and not only reach out to Latinos, but reach out to other uh, nationalities throughout the uh, conference. I have been so blessed to be involved in so many things here at Alliance. Uh, I am currently what started this calling at Diamond Hill. Uh, I'm involved with our praise team here and I felt the calling there when we did a concert. It was really special for me. I've also been blessed to be part of the SPRC this year uh, committee and uh, I am our representative or one of the representatives that will be going to annual conference uh, and I'm really excited about that. Th this church offers uh, Bible studies that I take advantage of, lots of programs with my kids that I'm also involved in with them. Uh, I'm also a youth leader here at Alliance United Methodist Church. And, I just, this church has been able to spiritually uh, feed me and grow me and has supported me in, in, in Circle of Friends ministry. I was raised as a Catholic. I almost felt like it was uh, dishonoring my family if I left the Catholic church, but I really felt a calling to try other churches. And uh, when I met my husband, he was Methodist, so we began to go to a Methodist church. And I feel that that enabled me to worship in a different way and to be fed spiritually. Uh, and that enabled me to be uh, who I needed to be. I found a home within the Methodist Church. And I think um, that some people may feel that. They may not be spiritually fed, not just in Catholicism, but any other uh, denomination. And I think they need to branch out and not get caught up in the denomination, but they need to find a home. And I have found that home here in the United Methodist Church. I think the most important thing is the calling from God, uh, that I was open and I listened to that calling. And then once I reached Diamond Hill and 
uh, kind of brainstorm Circle of Friends ministry, it enabled me to see that that's where I needed to be. Uh, and involving both churches was so incredible for me because I have a home here at Alliance and then including that and opening up the my borders kind of like opening up those borders to include Diamond Hill. And once I began to do it, I just realized that this is where God wanted me. I'm Grace Birmingham. I'm the council chair for St. Andrew's United Methodist Church. This year I have the privilege to serve as head of our church council. And I'm also a Sunday school teacher for the fourth and fifth grade. I feel we have an enormous opportunity to reach youth from all ethnic backgrounds. Scripture says that we should place emphasis on helping uh, our children become the church someday, become missionaries and, and be involved in ministry. And because children are so overwhelmed by what society is telling them that they need to do, they don't think about that. We don't think about that anymore. I think we really need to take a step back and look at what we're doing to reach our youth and, and to involve them in ministry. And I think the majority of that is leading by example. I believe we need to teach leadership skills. Um, in other, are, other areas of our lives, we have mentoring programs for things. Um, we take the time in our jobs to take our sons and daughters to work. And um, I, in my own life, I like to give my children opportunities to go to meetings with me, to see the process that's involved in actually taking a part in things in church. I love St. Andrews because, um, number one, I worship with my family. My parents attend here and my sister and her husband. Um, but St. Andrews is also an extended family to me. There are so many people here that, um, that I've grown in relationship and in serving with. If God has given you the ability to speak another language, it's a gift. And how you're using that gift to serve God says a lot about you. Don't, if you've been given that gift, don't waste that gift because there's a child there that needs you or an adult there that needs you. I'm Jacinto Alderete. And I'm Betty Alderete. And we are involved at, as volunteers at First United Methodist Church in Hearst. I had been involved for 32 years working at, the, at a community center and doing most of my work was, was with Hispanics. And uh, we've been involved in that for so long now that that's just a part of our lives. I know when we first came here, it's a very friendly church. And we felt like we were a part of the church from the very beginning. Uh, people made us feel welcome. And I didn't feel like um, they made me feel like I was different. Um, and I think that they um, acknowledge the fact that, that we are bilingual and that uh, that's not a detriment. We, we don't see that as a negative and we don't feel that people see that as a negative in us. Uh, the church has been very, very welcoming. Both of us were involved at Mission Central uh, since we arrived. And uh, first of all, I was involved with the food pantry and also as interpreting. Uh, and uh, they serve uh, Mission Central ser service, but 30% of the clientele are Hispanics, and I think there are about 5,000 different uh, family units that are involved at Mission Central. But the need is tremendous among the Hispanics as far as clothing is concerned, as far as food is concerned, as far as lodging, as far as needing monies to be able to rent homes. Uh, that, that need is, is there. The stereotyping of Hispanics, uh, they're stereotyped as, you know, in a different way. And I think uh, language is another area uh, but I feel that, again, here through our Spanish classes and through the culture classes that we give here, I think it gives first um, uh, members from this church uh, more of an opportunity to understand uh, uh, the culture and understand the language itself. I think they've, since they, they're stereotyped and kind of put in a, in a little box, um, they feel like they're going to be, um, 
that there's going to be a lot of prejudice, that they're going to be discriminated against. But um, I think what uh, First United Methodist Church in Hearst is doing, uh, I think is, is doing a tremendous job in breaking down some of those barriers because when young people come here and they see that this is a multi-ethnic church, that there are classes that people are making an effort to learn the language and learn their culture, uh, then I think that they feel, they're going to feel more and more accepted. But I, th I know the barriers exist, but I think we're helping to knock some of those barriers down. I, I see a lot of progress has been made. People that have come through our classes, um, they're there because they want to learn. This is totally um, a service that the church offers and uh, the response has been tremendous and uh, the interest is there. And as long as the interest is there, we're going to keep on doing it. Hi, my name is Javier Rodriguez. I'm here at White's Chapel United Methodist Church in South Lake, Texas. And my role here is I'm an associate pastor and full-time seminary student. Becoming a full-time seminary student starts out with my family and education, the emphasis that they put on education. I just knew that it was just the next step in the process. I knew I wanted to go to college ever since I was younger. I didn't know which college until I was a junior in high school. But after college, I knew I wanted to get my master's and go into seminary because of the obvious call from God. I think the biggest barriers may be the fact that a lot of Latinos in America today do not know Spanish. Um, Spanish it was not my first language and I'm not fluent yet, but I'm working on it. And I think that's probably a big barrier to, especially in Hispanic ministries in an area where you would have to be able to communicate in more than one language. And I think that's probably one barrier because my parents never spoke to me in Spanish. They spoke only in English. I don't know whatever reason they had with that. And my grandparents are the ones that spoke Spanish to me. and I didn't live with them, so it was, it was harder for me to pick up. So English was my first language. The White's Chapel has been a great blessing just to learn from all the pastors here and to learn from the staff members. I think it's definitely connecting with people. I'm a person that's grown up in a smaller community where connecting with people was very important to me, especially. And I think, my, especially my disciple class, it's a real small, intimate environment with seven students and myself. It's shown me different ways to help a community grow, I mean, to how we can implement small groups and just really seeing, especially with the church starting the 40 Days of Purpose, implementing small groups that people go out and their groups, they connect. I think in a big church environment, that's the important issue for people to connect with each other, to find that group, they connect with four or five people. No longer it's not just their spouse they connect with at the church, but a group of eight to 10 to 12 people that they see on, not just that they know their name now. They saw them in church, maybe a couple pews over, but now they know their name, they know their children, they know their family. I think that's the big part of small groups or of any teaching is that the connection that people feel. And I think that's very important in any community that you feel a distinct connection, a distinct belonging, which I think is what guides people. I'm David Martinez, pastor of El Buen Samaritano Mi Casa Su Casa. We constantly are are challenged to, to work with people from many, many places, from South America, from Central America, and we must learn to work with those different differences, different Hispanic people from different places. So it is very, very important to learn where they're coming from and know about their heritage and how we can incorporate in worship in our, in our lives. In order for us to, to encourage them and to help them to the to learn how the Methodist Church works. Um, some come with different backgrounds and some never have been in the church and never been in leadership. So this is an opportunity for them to develop leadership skills in their lives. And also some other challenges that for leadership is that they learn to work with other people they're not from their own place. So they, they must learn to kind of be multicultural in, the, in a sense to work together. God has given us leaders in our community and we need to be open to be able to equip them, to invite them in, to work with them and see how they, what they can bring to, to the church and enrich even more our Methodist Church. I think that God has set leaders in our community and sometimes we don't recognize them. And sometimes we want to get it from another place, and I, from another churches, where sometimes we have the leaders in our communities. There are leaders that God has brought us already and they're in our community. We just need to wake them up and invite them in and get them, get them moving because there's something special about them that, God, that they bring to the table. They have the passion, and, and I think that's important that they have the passion to, to go into ministry and, and, and if we can be the, uh, the doors 
for blessing, for educating themselves, that's even much, much better. When I was being, in, when I was coming to the Methodist Church, I came in through Boy Scouts, a, a, a ministry that helped me in my leadership. You know, I, that's how I got into the church. So there was an opportunity for me to develop skills and everything. But you know, sometimes when we're in the communities, people don't open the doors for that community. It doesn't get involved in bringing me in and see how, what we do in the church. Some people don't want to come to the church because they're afraid. So we try to help them by showing that, hey, it's fun, it's great, it's, it's exciting being in the, in, the, in the kingdom of God. It's exciting being part of the, a church. It's exciting to be in mission and to help the, the people, the needy, and, and, and work in the community to develop it. You know, it's a blessing there. And I think that we must learn to help the people to come in and to open the doors and, and go in. Sometimes you need to encourage others, come, let's come with me together. Let us do something. And that will make a big impact for more people, Hispanic, to enter into other to Anglo churches and to be with us. So you can see that some exciting efforts are already underway in the Central Texas Conference, but we know we can do much more. We need you to help us. May we all join in this exciting effort of evangelism and social justice. Whether we're including people of all colors in our congregations, or whether we are funding a new church where there's a large population of Hispanics, let us all do our part.